So uh, speaking of uh, it doesn't mean anything, anything if it's not secure, I guess you have another sort of aspect that you would like to share with us, Jim, about voting. Yeah, absolutely. I, we've, I, I don't know that we've talked about it on the show too much, but you know, people are always talking about um, you know, put, moving voting online. You know, there was a, a survey. Well, I, I came across this story maybe two weeks ago is the basis for what we're going to discuss today. But in the uh, in this story, in the conversation, they talked about a, a survey that had been done that suggested that 60% of respondents said they would vote online if they could. And if you just took those 18 to 35, that jumped up to 80%. You know, the young younger folks today are more comfortable online and you know if they had the ability to to do their voting online they would but the this article uh, points out that there are some real significant hurdles to that yet that we haven't completely dealt with Mm -hmm. Um, you know if if you can't verify end to end you know that that the vote that is recorded is what's actually cast you know that's that's going to that's going to result in people having less confidence in the result of the election on the other hand you know people want their votes to be anonymous so you don't want to be able to tie a particular vote to a particular person there are, there are some significant challenges yet to yet to be dealt with here mm-hmm. um, you know and one of the one of the issues is malware I mean, you know, there are some estimates of, you know, anywhere from 30, 40, 50 percent of all home computers are infected. If you allow people to vote from their home computer, then you have to worry about malware potentially, uh, you know, interfering with, intercepting, changing votes. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of like the idea of online voting because, it, you know, it, it increases um, convenience, mm-hmm. you know, the one of the issues, eligible voters should have the ability to cast their votes. Mm-hmm. And this you would seem to, you know, to help improve that, but, you know, the the crypto problems are are still pretty large. Yep. And um, so I don't I don't know if if we'll see it anytime soon. Um, if we can't the, the the final paragraph sums it up really well. Yeah, if we can't provide um, end-to-end verifiability, then we've got an issue. And you know, democracy is sufficiently important. If we can't do it properly online, then we shouldn't be doing it online. Well, I, I just have a couple uh, just to play devil's advocate. I tend to agree, but just uh, for the sake of argument. Uh, two things sort of come to mind. One is that you can make an argument that it doesn't really matter what the rules of the game are just so long as everybody's playing with the same rules. And I think one of the things that is sort of, uh, you know, that kind of needs to be watched for is that the rules that exist aren't necessarily biased against one organization or another. It just needs to keep it so that you're getting realistic results out of it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of the other things that this article pointed out is online voting has been used in a few places around the world. Yeah. It's been used, uh, I think, eight times in Estonia. Um, Norway ran some trials for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, some provinces in Australia have, have used it. Uh, there are some places in the U.S. But, you know, like Norway used it and they've basically scrapped the the project because they were concerned um, that while it might improve voter turnout the issues of verifiability and cost um, didn't really didn't really seem to outweigh the potential downsides yep. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I generally agree we're not quite there yet. That The other aspect of this to consider is that uh, you, you could easily make an argument that existing systems aren't that verifiable either. 
I mean, we, we like to think that things are written down. We like to think that we verified who the people are when they come through. But in any case, like I said, I, I don't think we're quite there yet, but uh, it, it's these types of things that need to be discussed. You know, I, th I think back on PKI and the promise of PKI, I think was never realized partly because it was striving for the perfect solution, something that was much better than it really needed to be to be able to pri provide actually a value add. The point being, in the voting system, we need to make sure that we're keeping the benefits in balance with the potential drawbacks of particular things. And so perhaps uh, you provide the options and then try to encourage people to do it in person where you have a more verifiable means and then sort of limit this the strength. I mean, we have a, the, the uh, electoral college as it is, you could put some constraints on the voting, the online voting, so that it doesn't significantly bias it if, if there was some sort of fraud. I mean, I'm just brainstorming here. I think I'm thinking of absentee, absentee voting, which is yeah. probably the closest analog I can think of yeah. to this situation where yeah, you, very you do give up your anonymity when voting. You know, yeah. you say this is me and this is my vote. Mm -hmm. If people are willing to give that up, and I'm not saying they should, but that's probably the closest you'll find because I find it hard to believe that you could do end-to-end -end traceability of this is one person, one vote, mm -hmm. and that's all they get. At the same time that you can do this is one person who voted somehow. And I think it's the, the crypto aspect that Jim talked about is interesting. If they can solve that problem, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. But once you get to that level of crypto knowledge, um, you've got adversaries who, and that's when you said anybody it, can cheat. Yeah, it's hard I think to that's maintain you integrity have with an, an, anonymity. anonymity. <laughs> I think once you get to that sort of those hard crypto puzzles, yeah. that's when everyone can cheat becomes very motivated people with really good crypto analysts can cheat. Yeah. That's a good suggestion. You know, I, I'm certainly no an expert in this topic area, but I, you know, I think there are things that really need to be thought about to sort of balance the benefits 